Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Next Team Podcast F1 and uh, it's back to our usual crew of suspects here. I'm Tarun. Joining me we have Yash and BK and we are, coming to you. we are coming to you after a very exciting weekend at Sochi which is a phrase I never thought I would say but <laughs> 2021 is full of surprises. It just keeps getting better. Yeah. Yeah, it just keeps getting better. The year that keeps on giving really. Yeah. And uh, well, before we get right into the episode, Yash, please take it away. Yes, thank you so much, guys, for all your support uh, for all our previous uh, content videos uh, from previous times. So if you want to check us out on Instagram and TikTok, do follow us at The Next Team SG. And on Spotify and YouTube, we are The Next Team Podcast. Yep, thanks, Yash. All our links can also be found in our description as well. Please do check us out. But uh, well, moving on, let's get right into the uh, weekend. We have to start with qualifying because uh, quite a bit of surprises there. Of course, Max didn't take part because of his uh, engine penalty, his uh, PU penalty, which sent him to the back of the grid. So uh, who wants to talk about qualifying because I didn't actually watch it. I didn't watch most of it. Uh, who wants <laughs> to get us started? Uh, I mean, uh, okay, I guess, do we really have to... Okay, we'll start from the back. So Verstappen, obviously, uh, didn't even set a time at all. Q3, uh, mm -hmm. everyone is kind of expected. Uh, I think he had uh, ample time or ample practice with the track uh, during uh, FP1, 2 and 3. And FP3 was washed out. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, FP3 was what? Washed out, washed out. It was raining very heavily. Oh, okay, okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, as he proved in the race, I mean, he really knew his way around the track well enough. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we'll get to that later. But uh, and then we have the usual suspects, Mazepin, Giovinazzi, uh, Sh Mick Schumacher and uh, Raikkonen. I was surprised to see the, uh, the two uh, Alfa Romeos actually not making it to Q2. It uh, doesn't really happen that often. Uh, and uh, let's see. Yeah, that's it really. That, that, that's it for Q1. Q2, Leclerc at the back, uh, did Leclerc take... Uh, yeah, he had a penalty as well. Yeah, he had a penalty as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Latifi, uh, Latifi above uh, Leclerc. Uh, Sunoda 13th, which is sort of where he's been uh, qualifying this season. Uh, Gasly at 12th. Now, that was surprising. That was a surprise. Uh, yeah. yeah. If I'm not wrong, in the previous race, uh, where did he qualify? He's usually always in top seven. Yeah, he's, to always, yeah he's always at like number six, if I yeah, remember yeah. correctly. Yeah. And so it was 12 and that was... I, I remember yeah. after uh, Q2, I think there was a clip of Gasly who was furious with his car. Like he was sitting in the car and he was yeah. very angry. Oh, he was, he, was, he was hitting the... Yeah, he yeah, was hitting yeah, the halo. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Very but that's, yeah. Uh, I think they got, uh, they got kicked out in uh, quite a small margin. Actually, I think Gasly was like 100th, but Vettel was the one who was half a hundred. He got kicked out of... Uh, like he didn't mm -hmm. qualify for Q3 in that margin. So yeah, so Vettel in 11th. And then we move on to Q3. Uh, Ocon in 10th, Perez 9th. Uh, nothing too much to say over there. Uh, <laughs> Stroll 8, Bottas 7, uh, Alonso 6. Also, I have nothing to say. Ricardo in 5th and Hamilton. Okay, so now this is oh. where... Yeah, so now this is where we have a lot of things to talk about. So Hamilton actually, uh, at the start of Q3, he set a lap on uh, Inters yeah. and uh, and he was the fastest. I don't think anyone else set a time actually. So obviously he was yeah. in professional pole. And uh, it started raining and uh, everyone... No, it started drying up. Oh yeah, sorry. It started drying up. Uh, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it started drying up. Then, uh, yeah, so everyone came in. Uh, everyone started in uh, slicks and uh, Hamilton just couldn't get going in the slicks. First of all, he hit the pit wall when he came in. Yeah. Right? Uh, that was a bit... Uh, but to be fair, the pit entry in Sochi is a bit... Um, not your, no, it's actually very tight. Uh, yeah, but actually, you don't expect them from a yeah, seven-time yeah. world champion. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> but I mean... Uh, I mean if, that's everyone, a rookie error. Yeah, it's something yeah, that if true. Mazepin did it, you'd be like, ah, this guy disappointed. Yeah, yeah. yeah so... Yeah. I mean, to be honest, that's kind of why Hamilton didn't manage to get a good lap in the slicks because uh, it took the team a lot of time to get his front wing changed because yeah, yeah. Bottas was right behind, so they had to push yeah. him away because it happened just so late, you know. So right, yeah. The, so the, the wing change pretty much guaranteed that Hamilton only had one shot. He only had time for the yeah. out lap and one lap and not two laps. 
yeah. even Bottas actually I think the commentators were saying that he might have time for a second lap but even he couldn't get yeah, yeah. Uh, a second lap in and uh, yeah apart from that uh, apart from Hamilton of course then now we move on to the top three which yeah, is, but it's because uh, of the conditions why like they needed at least two laps to get in, in as well because yeah, the yeah, right. softs wouldn't heat up quickly you know, so they yeah, need to yeah. do a lot more laps mm. uh, so yeah I guess in, was, in, was everyone else doing two out laps as well yeah, yeah. Everyone, yeah. That, that's the reason why nobody set a lap on Inters. Like a lot of them, yeah. they on their first out lap on Inters, they just immediately went back in. Mm, They're like, right. no, okay, it's dry enough. Let's just go out and dry. So yeah. that saved them a lot of time. Whereas Lewis and Bottas, both of them did, did a time lap and then they went in. Yeah. And right. took exactly. them quite, quite, quite a lot of time now. That's mm-hmm. why. So, uh, okay, firstly, I, I want to make sure that I get this correct because I want to be remembering it correctly. So the clock hit zero and... Uh, most of the drivers have finished and I think the first person across the line, am I correct in saying it was Sainz? Sainz was across the line yeah. and he took provisional pole and then I was like, wow. And then uh, who was after that? Was it? Uh, Lando, Lando. Yeah, so Lando came in after that and then uh, he goes provisional pole and I was like, oh, wow. And then all of a sudden, Russell comes in <laughs> from he was like ninth or something. Man, this guy is a Saturday god, honestly. He jumps i just saw the name go straight up to third i was like oh my <laughs> god like the the that's a front three no one would have ever predicted in arguably the most boring circuit of the of, of the calendar like it was yeah. incredible and i was like uh, so excited for sunday it got uh, every yeah it got everyone excited for sunday that's yeah, what i was gonna yeah, say as well yeah. uh that's about it it was a really fantastic qualifying session yeah. and actually i found myself questioning you know i mean this is it this is qualifying at its peak like after the clock strike zero in Q3, you have all sorts of drama happening. This is qualifying. So I was thinking to myself, is it really like, because you know the new, the spring race qualifying. Mm. I was thinking, is it really better? Like, I don't really think it can compare to this kind of, uh, like within a space of 10 seconds, everyone's expectations were just totally like subverted. So yeah, yeah I just don't think spring race, uh, spring qualifying can provide that kind of emotions. But uh, yeah, we'll. I guess we'll that's get... a topic for a different day. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. topic for a different day. I guess the end of season review, uh, if we do one. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's about it for qualifying. Well, uh, but you know what's the breaking news coming into Sunday? Yep. Bottas took a great engine penalty as well. Uh, yep. uh, yeah. And you know, for me, right, I felt that that was quite suspicious because they wanted to keep Max ahead, eh, behind, sorry. Uh, I think that, that was why I, he took a penalty. To yeah, I have a penalty. feeling it's that as well. Yeah. But I mean, it's part of it's part of the sport. Uh. It's I mean, did you guys see? Did you guys see Bottas' Instagram post afterwards? Uh, no, I didn't. He, uh, Darren, yeah, you saw yeah, right? Yeah, I saw his. He basically his story, posted right? a meme. You, you remember from Mo- uh, Monza? There was this meme of Bottas. Oh, uh, they're looking at the screen. Yeah, like, looking at the screen. Is, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll show you show you to you later. But basically, what Bottas posted was him with all his engine penalties at the back. Oh. Uh... So it was kind of like a big <laughs> adversity for uh, for this. So. Oh wow. Yeah, I think I think he's done. Like he's done with yeah. Mercedes. He knows he's got new yeah. seat. He can just. I mean, like I said, it's it's a part of the sport, but it's really it's really weird how it keeps happening to Bottas, man. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's just like it, it, at some point, even people like me who are like, oh, you know, this is all part of the sport and everything. You guys be like, dude, that's a bit like yeah, that's man. a bit suspicious, man. He's it's kicking just... like kicking a man while he's down. Huh? But to be fair, Bottas doesn't really care anymore. So yeah, uh, he has a seat for next year. So. I think I, I mean I, in the in the end it didn't make much difference because the step yeah. over two came in like what six or eight yeah. laps. Yeah, yeah, that was so. yeah, it was lap six. It was and lap six. Yeah. Bottas didn't really put up much of a yeah, fight, it wasn't fight, really, he just let yeah. it through. And so like you you have to wonder, could have must Bottas really finish a hit if he didn't take that penalty? I guess we'll never know. But yeah. it's just for for a strategy that I mean the strategy the strategy itself is you want to keep Max behind. So you you have to give him a very, very tough fight. And then lap six comes around and Max just goes around the outside. It's as yeah. if it's nothing. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure I, I Bottas, think he's just had enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bottas knows what, what happened there. He's just, he just yeah. like, oh, you know, I'll just let this guy through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can't, can't blame him also. Uh. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. yeah. So I guess we've sort of spilled over to talking about the race. So uh, yeah. we should yeah, go to the yeah, start now. So, yeah. Let's just start with... Uh, uh, five lights going out and of course that start I think it was 
Very good start. Like, yeah, very good start very from interesting. everyone in the front three, front four. Yeah. Yeah, yeah even Lance, dude. Lance from no, P, not front four. P four, I think. Okay, Hamilton, Hamilton had a bad yeah, start. Yeah, Hamilton yeah. was at P seven after the first lap, I think. Yeah, I mean he yeah. had a good start, start, but after that, uh, he had a slowdown because yeah. Norris got pushed aside. Yeah, yeah, he he actually, I think I think he chose the wrong line for approaching turn one. Mm. Uh, I think he decided to hug the wall, and then Lando was pushed inside. Correct. So, uh, yeah, that cost him. So he was P seven when the first lap finished. The surprising thing about the start was that. Uh, it was a very very tight start, and I was just waiting for some someone contact to crash. Happen. Yeah, yeah, someone to crash. Surprisingly right. clean. It's just something that you don't see. I mean, we've and never everyone seen was like very like side by side for like pretty much half yeah. the lap. You know. Yeah, obviously. exactly. And I was just waiting. Like something has to go wrong. <laughs> Somehow they finished the first lap, and I was like, wow. Okay. Especially like into turn two, right? You saw all the cars. Everyone was like going all over. Oh shit! I I was just. Like in my brain, I was like, "Oh no, someone's gonna hit someone for sure." Yeah, yeah. But oh, I'm glad nobody I was mostly, got hit. I was mostly concerned for Lando and Sainz. <laughs> oh, uh, but you know, yeah. Alonso just took the escape road. He didn't care. You uh, yeah. guys saw. Like, he, was apparently, he was, was apparently he was practicing that on his way out to the grid as well. Like he was just uh, trying to see how how fast he could get through the oh, escape road. Yeah. I actually did want to bring up that point. Do you guys think that's a fair? thing because technically the escape road is supposed to be if you can't make the corner yeah yeah and right. that's sort of like a it's supposed to be a punishment to make sure that yeah. you don't gain an advantage by going off the track but that's I mean, exactly yeah. what it I mean, I, I, i'm sure had he gained an advantage by that the fia they would have definitely yeah, uh, yeah they, they would have made their voices heard because i mean it, i once again i don't want to jump forward but we all know what happened to lando and he got a penalty for coming back into the pit lane we'll touch on that later but even things like that the fia really likes to stamp their authority on it so the moment they decide that someone is maybe even having a slight advantage if there's even a chance of a slight advantage the fia will give them a penalty so i think uh that's uh yeah it won't last long honestly if and honestly i think other things would have complained as well exactly yeah so that's true. Yeah. But also, I feel probably, I mean, because I've not seen Alonso's on board on why he went so wide. Uh, mm -hmm. But I guess there's a reason why, because you actually reached, you saw the entry, right? It's actually quite tight. Like even last year, last or last year, I can't remember which year, Science just went straight into the, that, that he tried to take the, you know, full speed and he just crashed. Yeah, he oh, did. Right, yeah. If you remember last, it was yeah. it last year. I think it was last year. Last year. Yeah. yeah, last right. year. Who was so, it? He, he he crashed into like the I think it was front left, right? Yeah, front mm. front left. Right, right. Okay, yeah, I remember yeah. it. Yeah. So so I guess, yeah, I mean the corner is like the escape road is designed in a way to reduce speed and join as safely as possible. Right. And yeah. everyone around the outside was probably having a lot of speed advantage anyways. So right. yeah. I, I guess he didn't get any advantage in my opinion. Mm. Yeah. Actually, if I I actually remember reading that these things. Uh, these escape roads, right? They they are intentionally designed in such a way that it, it it kind of it's safe, but at the same time it makes sure that the person uh, the driver doesn't get any advantage. That's why in Monza the the escape road has like the slalom instead uh, of the, right. the chicane. Yeah, so uh, right, I right. think if as fast as they try to take it, I don't really think there might be any advantage. And they if and and the and if there is any advantage, I think the FIA would would uh would just give them a penalty. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that just leaves the question. I have no idea why Alonso did that. <laughs> so it's just a less crowded. I think. I well. think it's Al yeah, Alonso is probably just trying to have that you know fast and furious meme of see you again. <laughs> yeah, go two separate ways. Is uh, I think uh, it could also be a possibility that in case he had to use it, he he already like there's muscle yeah, memory yeah. for him mm. around the around so that that might be a that might if be you a, actually notice right when Sainz overtook uh Norris into the first turn he actually went a bit deep I don't know yeah. if you guys saw it correct I mean, there was almost lost, a lost it at the time yeah, but you, yeah you almost had to maybe use that escape rope but managed to pick it up and stay yeah. on track yeah yeah so so I guess maybe that's why Alonso kind of just decided to instead of take the risk just you know why not take the safer route to the side right mm. yeah so uh. Okay. Uh, that's. I think we've pretty much covered the start. Have we? Yeah. Anything else to say? Yeah. Just have to bring up. Uh, signs. That was. Yeah. What a wonderful start that was. Yeah. I think his actual start start was not as good as the others around him, but mm -hmm. he picked up such a good tool from everyone in front and. Yeah. 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 And was... the thing is, uh, I'm. 
once again his performance flies under the radar <laughs> due to due to other things that are, that happened during the weekend but really it's a fantastic performance just, just a fun fact for you guys so whenever uh, science gets a podium right Leclerc does not get any points for dnfs right he's uh, i think science uh, has taken over uh, Leclerc in points for ferrari this season in the I drivers no, I, can't, I can't remember let me check let me I check i'm checking i'm checking uh, talk uh about yes yourself. he has Ah uh, yeah, so he has right. Oh yeah. wow, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, eight point five points I hit now. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Nice, nice. Yeah, but definitely, I think science has is definitely the driver who's quite underrated on the grid. Right. Honestly. Yeah. I mean, and honestly, his performance have been much better than Leclerc. Because Leclerc has one podium. I think science has three. Yeah, three. Mm. Eh, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, three. Yeah, three. So. I, I think, mean, to be fair, Leclerc has been a bit unfortunate as well here and there. Yeah, yeah. But but then at the same time, you have to uh, how to say, give signs of credit because he has been able to manage, like not manage, like be at the same pace as Leclerc on the mm. offset, you know, on the yeah. go. Mm. Whereas if you see people like Ricardo and stuff, they've been taking so long right. to even match Norris and have mm. only been ahead like once or twice. Right. Uh, yeah. Not on a consistent basis. So mm. yeah, definitely, science has done an amazing job so far. Yeah. And, so uh, I mean, while we're just on the topic of uh, signs and Ricardo, now it kind of looks more like uh, all four drivers in McLaren and Ferrari are performing at a pretty high level. So, mm -hmm. uh, do you guys think that now the battle between Ferrari and McLaren is just going to come down to the team itself and the car itself? Oh or, yeah, definitely. Yeah, or would it still have a driver element in it? Yeah, because uh, I actually in our I think it was our first episode of the season. I said that uh, it depends uh, whether McLaren finishes above or Ferrari finishes above depends on which new driver adjusts. Uh, better and faster. Yeah, better yeah, and faster. faster. Yeah. yeah, but we didn't take into consideration the fact that Leclerc will get a bit unlucky, mm -hmm. and so now we have Ricardo who has, I think it's a bit too soon to say he has like found his form, but he did win last race oh, so you yeah. yeah you you can't really uh, deny that so, but uh i think uh, science has been amazing so uh, i think right now right now i'd say that mclaren will finish on top and i think it will come down to the car itself because mclaren is pretty much the only other car apart from red bull who can give mercedes at least a fight a, a, a respectable mm -hmm. fight uh, yeah. Otherwise, the Mercedes. I mean, I mean, we saw it as well uh, in Sochi uh, when yeah. Lewis was fighting. Yeah. It's so hard to get past Ricardo, you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the problem, not the problem. The reason why I couldn't get past, firstly, Mercedes is not designed to follow well. Yeah. And secondly, it's also because both are cars have Mercedes engines, so yeah, mm. it's very hard to find that extra gain of speed. You know? Yeah. I think when it, when it comes to running in midfield, I would say like McLaren and Mercedes are very yeah. evenly matched. Yeah. Maybe yeah. McLaren might even have an edge because. They are more designed towards over the game. Yeah, Definitely. that's true. And I feel as an overall package, so McLaren is a lot better than Ferrari. That, yeah. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Because if you look across the season itself, Lando has been performing a lot better than Leclerc. Like, let's just put those two established drivers together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In terms of car performance wise, Lando has been way ahead. Like, yeah, you absolutely. can see that from yeah, McLaren. There's no doubt. Huh? Yeah. And also, the, I mean, it even comes down to the not the small things, but behind the scenes, or outside the car, like the way that the team is run, the, the strategic yeah. decisions of the team. Uh, Ferrari consistently dropped the ball on strategy, as we all know. So yeah. I think, uh, I mean, it, but to be honest, the gap isn't too big. It's 17 and a half points. That's yeah. the gap between McLaren Let's and Let's say the difference was uh, throughout until the point now, right? Ricardo was not in the best of forms. And yeah. now he's trying to change, he's getting into form. Yeah, you can yeah, see yeah. the change in him. Yeah, yeah. And that's so, going to make a huge difference now. Right. So even though it's only 17 and a half points, I think Ferrari need to really, um, I think Leclerc needs to find his form again. Not really find his form, but he needs to start getting points consistently. Definitely. And uh, Sainz, um, there's nothing really I can criticize about him. He's, yeah. cons he's consistently getting points. He's been doing his job well. Though. Yeah, he's been doing his job he's well. Considering, considering it's his first, his first season, it's really, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really quite commendable. So, uh, we'll see. It remains to be seen, really. But uh, I have a very strong feeling McLaren will finish third. Right? It's not really... Uh, it'll, it'll be nice to see Ferrari finish third, but I don't really think it's <laughs> happening. Okay, so... Well, I hope back... you don't. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. So, back to the race. Wait. We've pretty much covered the start. Actually, yeah. there wasn't 
a whole lot to talk about between the start and yeah. Well, it was just eventually Lando getting back and overtaking Science. You know, yeah. I think Science said in his yeah, post it was a good that move as well. Absolutely, it was actually yeah. quite brief. Yeah, definitely. And I think Science was starting to struggle with tires as well. Hmm. Uh, because and that's why Ferrari put him very early, which actually put him in on the back foot. If yeah. you look at it throughout yeah. the race, but luckily the rain kind of helped him in the end. Yeah. Yeah, but then it, it kind of scooped Charles up like the same time. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So a and, double-edged sword for Ferrari, I guess. Yeah. So, and, uh, so speaking of pit. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Before we okay, go to yes. that incident, I just want a, a special shout out for, for Lance Stroll because uh, in the fiftieth lap, he actually managed to hit his teammate. Hit, uh, I think it was Gasly, and hit the wall Rental. in the same lap. <laughs> Yeah, Vettel and Gasly. He yeah, hit Vettel to the yeah. wall and then he spun Gasly around. Yeah, and then he hit the wall also. And he, yeah. he put his car in the wall, all in the same yeah. lap. The uh, grand slam of uh, yeah. <laughs> having that's a bad a, race. That's, that's, a, that's a head trick, you know. That's a, well, that's to a be honest, trick. he was having a brilliant race after that. Yeah, he was. He had an amazing was, yes. start. I think it's just the rain came down and he yeah. was... He really caught... Um, I wouldn't say he caught everyone off guard, but... Uh, uh, it I didn't a lot of drivers off guard. Yeah, because I think it, it's not so much the fact that it rained, more so the fact that it was so intense so quickly. Like, yeah. uh, right. so, okay, so I guess uh, we'll, before we talk about the incident also, uh, let's just comment with Stepan because he was in 20th and then he came all the way to second. Oh, I think yeah. uh, he yeah, made the, he, he pitted for inters at the correct time also. Mm. So to be fair yeah. to him, uh, yeah, that, so that was a good decision by Red Bull. And then now we can talk about <laughs> Norris and Hamilton. So I obviously, as the Ferrari, as the Ferrari fan, I'm, happy from, I'm from the outside looking in. But uh, honestly, I, I like Lando Norris. I'm quite gutted for him. But uh, I, I think the two of you should should mm. take point on this because we have a Hamilton mm. fan and we have a McLaren <laughs> fan. So this is I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take a back seat. I mean, honestly, all three of us have a very good reason to talk about it. Maybe, yeah, yeah. but you know, Yash, you can go first. I want to actually sidetrack a little bit to the earlier race during the first pit stops, actually, when Lando was leading, right? After he overtook signs. Yeah. And Ricardo was ahead of Hamilton. Mm-hmm. They pitted Hamilton one lap before, if I remember correctly. And Ricardo came in the next lap or something to pit, and he had a very slow pit stop. If, I don't know if you guys remember. I yeah, think BK, you want to see us. So yeah, yeah. Um, it, eleven was it? Eight, eight or nine seconds, like, but it was, was a long it stop. Yeah. Like. yeah, it was a very long stop. It yeah. was uh, it was it the pit stop where it looked like almost they were changing each individual tire one by one, because uh, that I, he I only had one bad pit stop, right? Yeah, only yeah. one bad. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this this the same one that I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So, at that point, I felt that. Uh, McLaren lost the race for Norris because I felt that if Ricardo would have stayed ahead of Norris, uh, not Norris, sorry, Ricardo would have stayed ahead of Hamilton. Yeah. Um, there was more chance for Norris to win the race because I think we all know that Mercedes is very quick. Yeah. So when Hamilton started to catch Norris, I was like, oh shit. Okay, maybe this yeah. is where McLaren has lost the race because I honestly didn't think Norris was going to keep ahead. Yeah. But then I suddenly Norris suddenly found a lot of pace. Yeah. Like when Hamilton got close, I think Norris was just trying to manage his tires. He was like, you know what? Yeah. Lewis is going to come to my back anyways. Hmm. Might as well just save the tires now and then I'll push, you know, whenever he's right Yeah, he me. was doing a fuel saving also, I think he mentioned in his uh, post-race, in, uh, post-race interview. Yeah, which was very uh, smart actually. Very yeah. tactical driving by him. Yeah, it's just, that's, the, that's what makes it so, just so painful, honestly. Yeah. Uh, and also another, just to add on to your point, if Ricardo was in front of Hamilton, uh, Norris might have taken the option for Inters. Definitely. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I, I just think he, he was feeling the pressure of Lewis breathing down his neck. And I think when it's your first Grand Prix win, you've worked your entire life for it. All sorts of yeah. things play through your mind. And Definitely. you know the way he managed the race, the way he drove was so good. Uh, it's just unfortunate. But I, but I think for me, there's two elements to it. I think the first element is, of course, Norris. Because Norris himself wanted to stay on, on the slicks itself. Right. Which yeah. arguably, okay, I, I understand that because as a driver, right, you see what's in front of you. You have your own confidence. You feel yeah. the car. So yeah. for you, okay, I feel that slicks is the best to go. I'll stick with slicks. So I understand noise that in that standpoint of view. And McLaren actually tried to tell him that, you know, it's time. We should maybe box pointers. Yeah. But I think here's the issue where I feel that like McLaren should have been a bit more assertive. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because, yeah, I was about to say that also. Yeah. Because what Mercedes did was even Lewis didn't want to live. Like, he wanted to stay on slicks because, you know, uh, Norris was right ahead of him. He didn't yeah. want to lose sight of him. 
Yeah. But then after two times of Mercedes telling him, the third time Mercedes asserted their dominance. They were like, yeah. no, you got to box, rain's going to get harder. And that's yeah. why Lewis came into the box and that yeah. won him the race ultimately. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I think the 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 team should have taken into account that Lando, for all his talent, he's still a young driver. He still has never won a race before. So this is all very new to him. Being chased down in the last few laps can put a lot of pressure. Uh, I think... Uh, okay, never mind. That's sidetracking. So yeah, he can put a lot of pressure. So uh, I just feel like uh, you're right. Uh, they should have been a bit more assertive. Uh, I think Zach Brown, uh, he, he could have, he could have uh, put his foot down and say, yeah. you know what, just come in. Because uh, at the end of the day, it, uh, I think what they were thinking is, because obviously they read Lando, right? Yeah. I think is this is going to be his first win. And if he bets against the weather and wins the race, it's a great headline. It, yeah, huh? it's, it's a great headline. I think they right. were thinking too far ahead. <laughs> but uh, this, I think I mean, that's one thing. And the second, I think the other thing perspective for me is that probably they just didn't expect the rain to come so hard in, yeah, immediately. Yeah. Because there's that one point, I think the one lap after Hamilton hit that, right? Yeah. He was still okay. Yeah. But it quickly changed when Norris just went past the pit like the in entrance line he went past it and it suddenly started pouring down yeah i i, I actually i can yeah I, I remember the exact point where i realized that lando was not going to win it was uh so after hamilton pitted they showed the there's like a straight coming down to turn six mm-hmm. uh mm. at, there's a there's a camera angle and then so norris comes down and then the next time they the next time norris reaches that they cut to that angle and you can only see mist and then there's like Giovanazzi was going through and then what was it? Joe Norris was just yeah. Yeah, yeah and then or the Norris just emerges from the from the mist, and then they're like, "This guy's on slicks." And Hamilton right. was four seconds behind. I was like, "Do you know what? There's no chance." I think that was. I think it was exactly after that that he he went off. I think. Yeah, yeah, he went yeah. off at the exact exact moment. Yeah, so uh, it's just really unfortunate. He's yeah. so he even fought well against. Hamilton. There was one time where he yeah. went a bit wide and he managed to pull it back. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. Really good racing. Actually, point. when he actually started pouring down, if you notice, Norris was managed able to gain a slot bigger margin of advantage to Hamilton compared to Hamilton trying to close that. Yeah. Like in, you would expect Hamilton as the more experienced driver to have been a better car to have better, even though it's slicks on wet, but like have better, yeah. you know, uh, driving in that in yeah. those conditions. But Norris showed great maturity even in yeah. those conditions to me. Yeah. And also in the in the half lap before Norris was asked to pit for Inters, uh, the DRS was disabled. So it was... Uh, yeah, that should that have been an indication play- now. Yeah, that should have been an indication. But uh, you know what? It is what it is. Lessons yeah. learned. <laughs> I mean, for sure, I think McLaren for McLaren as well as a team in the past decade or so, this is very new territory they've been in. You know, race win last week and now suddenly yeah. in a very different position compared to where they're used to. So yeah. They'll learn from this. I'm pretty sure Lando yeah. will learn from this. McLaren as a team will learn from this and, you know, will bounce back a lot stronger yeah. next time. So, I mean, for me, it's it's uh, the fact that Hamilton won number 100, it's, uh, it softens the blow a lot because I do really like Lando. Mm. I think he's uh, quality, top talent, everything. But uh, I, if you ask me, I would say he deserved the win from Saturday through Definitely. And but you know you can see why he did that. You can understand why yeah. uh, McLaren didn't want to force it too much because when you put uh, a possible P two, if he had bid it, you compare that to what was the the alternative if he didn't bid and he won, that would have been two races in a row, two wins in a row for McLaren. That's something they haven't had in uh, God knows how long. Yeah. So I mean, you can see why they did that. It was just. Uh, it was just a gamble it's unlucky, that went honestly. very yeah. wrong. Yeah. yeah, it's it was a risk, and unfortunately, this time it didn't pay off. Like it's yeah. maybe some other day it might have paid off. Like for example, actually, in fact, on Saturday it's it paid off. You know, because the track was still a little wet on Saturday. It wasn't mm. completely dry, and they went okay. on six, and he got a pole. So right. Yeah. And yeah, we also yeah. So uh, one last thing before we sort of end. Uh, another thing is I want to once again. Talk about the FIA with their penalty for Norris. Uh, they didn't give him a penalty. They, they didn't actually give him they, a penalty. They didn't, yeah. No, yeah. but they, they they rescinded it because they actually dished out the penalty and then after the race, they actually went back and revisited it and no, they didn't it? give him the, fen- the penalty. Okay. I mean, that's I thought what they I just read. reprimanded him, I thought. 
But I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, why would you even do that? Because the, the, the point I'm trying to make is, so, okay, he's made the wrong call, right? He's on slicks on a terribly wet track. He enters the pit lane correctly. He slides out. And it's then, not really his fault also. Though. Yeah, exactly. And he, yeah. And, he, and he cuts back in and then they're reprimanding him for that. The alternative is he misses the pit, uh, he misses the pit lane and then he does another lap in, at a snail space in a it's more dangerous for other exactly. cars actually yeah, yeah. A- anyone can just run into the back of him at any time which is the alternative is a lot more dangerous so what else do you expect him to do it's ridiculous but I think it would still be a penalty if he just went through and continued with the lap because he cut out of the yeah. pit lane as well yeah so like he went in and then he went out yeah. which is yeah. also technically is wrong I think the, the, the fact what uh, FIA were playing through is that Technically, what he did is wrong, but mm. they weren't putting the penalty on him because it was. They yeah, realized the circumstances, lah. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a circumstantial yeah. thing. And and I'm honestly glad, you know, otherwise that would have been a uh, you know yeah, like it would, it would have been a wounds. very yeah. bad precedent to set as well, uh. like, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's just it, it is not right that he should get a penalty because yeah, yeah. he shouldn't. Yeah. But at the same time, there should be some sort of uh, altercation, some sort yeah. of yeah. result for yeah. what he w- did. Words in a rule book shouldn't matter more than the safety of drivers. Are. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. what I feel. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, is there anything that we missed or is that the end? Talking about penalties, Stroll got two, I think, eight penalty points on his license now, I think. So it's probably like about one or two away from a race ban. Like you need 12 points Ooh. to get a race oh, ban. Damn. Stroll. So it's safe for Norris also, actually. You know, Norris is on eight points or so right now. Oh, wow. When penalty did they pick points. up these points? When did yeah. Stroll pick up these points? Stroll, I'm not sure, but did Norris picked pick up any for the Sepp and Gasly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He picked up the penalty points for that, basically. But I'm not sure if it's total of eight or his accumulation from other points as well. I'm not too oh, sure of that. Nice. But I know for Norris, it's because he got a lot of penalties in Baku and stuff for some stupid stupid remember if we talked about it i think on yeah the yeah we did, we did. Like it was for the thing was it you know it was for the overtake i think uh someone tried yeah, to a red flag overtake. or something i can't yeah. remember exactly now right. but it was oh and then austria as well uh for his uh, move on he was i think on podium or something he pushed someone wide i can't remember who now oh but yeah he, he got a podium for that so well. like he didn't really push him wide and we discussed that as well right yeah. okay so yeah, we might have a Mahavir Ragunathan situation <laughs> soon. So yeah, I think uh yeah, is that it, guys? Anything else? Yeah, I guess that's about it for mm. um what a what a Insane wonderfully Sochi. surprisingly exciting weekend at Sochi. Yeah, oh, and uh, we're only going there one more year only. After that, yeah, we're going same to this book. Yeah. Oh, just when it starts to get good. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, uh, um, you know, closing remarks uh, at the end up of the week. Let's start with L. Uh, there's only I think one we're person. all thinking yeah. the same thing. Uh, it's uh, Lando Norris, uh, for sure. Yeah. Unfortunately. It's just, it's just McLaren as a whole for me because if they didn't screw up, uh, if Ricardo's... Ricardo's it could have been a one-two. Yeah, it could have been a one-two. Yeah, it could have been a one-two. Yeah. Yeah. Been another one too. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's a, it's an it's a L for McLaren and Lando. Yep. Um, dub of dub the is Mercedes. Okay, yeah. I'll just go with that. And ah, Lewis Hamilton. Let me Lewis just, Hamilton uh, yep. Yeah, <laughs> Lewis Hamilton. Yes, a hundred race wins, and this dub gives him hundred and one. So, uh, <laughs> dub of the week for <laughs> Lewis That's Hamilton. Right. Well, well, technically he has ninety nine. Okay, Seb agrees he has ninety nine. Why is that? Oh, oh you didn't get the joke. <laughs> oh no no no! I I sorry again. Canada 2019. Oh, right. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. yeah, yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, okay, according to Master Sep, uh, it's 99. <laughs> Man, that, yeah. that was a, that was a, that's, that's a good memory. Uh. <laughs> him, him switching the oh, yeah. good stuff. So, uh, uh, any other nominations for uh, well, Russell so back in points again? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean what he had to fight like hell for his first point, and yeah. now he seems to be getting points quite regularly. Quite ways. regularly, so yeah, it's yeah. nice to see. Good to see. Yep. Yeah. This oh. is a special shout out to Bottas. Uh, someone he was P14 yeah. right on lap 47, 48, but the pits like the rain suddenly yeah. put him into P5. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> good for him, I guess. Yeah, it's a it's a hell of an undercutter. Uh. <laughs> yeah. And Max as well, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Max also to got help too. Mm. So, yeah. Yep. I guess that's a good thing, you know, that even though Max started from the back of the grid, he managed to finish second. Yeah. Mm. It's, 
that's a good thing for the championship, championship race as a exactly. goal. Exactly. Because it's it's still two points now. Lewis is ahead. Yeah, now instead Lewis is ahead. Okay. Yeah. That's the only difference. So, so now the challenge will be points. for Mercedes to pick a race where they can move pick Hamilton a up a lot. Yeah. And we actually have to do predictions for next race, right? Turkey? Turkish Grand Prix? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Let's do a quick one. Okay, so uh, my predictions for the Turkish Grand Prix, I'm going to say Hamilton will take pole and Hamilton will win. Okay. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would say, I think, I can't remember how last year's Turkey went because last year's Turkey was un, like qualifying was under wets and Stroll got pole. That's all I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But Stroll I, to uh, take pole again. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll, I'll go with Max for pole and I'm going to go with, I don't know, actually, maybe a Ferrari to win. I okay. see. I see. Interesting. I yeah, first Ferrari win in two years. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like saying Ferrari, man. I miss Ferrari at the top step, even though I'm not a Ferrari fan. Oh, I miss Ferrari at the top also, but I know better. <laughs> I know better than to predict Ferrari to win, man. <laughs> Come on, Ferrari is uh, on the top step every race. See, see, every I'm race. the McLaren domination already for the past two weekends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tarun. Yeah, I'm going with Max on pole and uh, a surprise McLaren win. Okay. Okay. And okay. uh probably Max and Lewis taking each other out once again. It's a tight track. I oh, won't be surprised yeah, at all. That, that gives flashbacks to, if you guys remember, I don't know, it's Seb and uh, Mark Webber in Red Bull. They had a very big collision in Turkey. I can't remember which one, but... Was it Multi-21? No, right. Yes. No, no, not Multi-21. That was Malaysia. Multi-21 oh, right. was Multi-21. Yeah, Multi-21 but, is Malaysia. Yeah, but they uh, had one as well. Seven mm. So, is that yeah. it? I guess that's it for uh, yeah. this weekend. So, uh, well, that's uh, you heard what we had to say about the whole Sochi weekend and our predictions for the next race. So I guess we will catch you again, hopefully in another two weeks' time after Turkey. Uh, just as long as that's going to be as exciting as uh, Russia that was, I think we'll have a very good weekend then as well. But until then, it's uh, me, Tarun, it's Yash and BK signing off. So, ciao guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.